Do video games require a different UX approach than websites and applications? At our September virtual UX conference, Dr. Jacob Nielsen shares his thoughts on the topic. In many ways, yes, but also in some ways, no. Uh, so first of all, video games are another user interface, and therefore and they, we're designing them as user interfaces, and there is a context to use, and, and sometimes they're collaborative and so forth. So there's a lot of things that I actually somewhat similar to what we already do. There's one thing that is a humongous difference, which is that video games uh, in some sense have no real uh, purpose as a, other than being fun and enjoyable to, to play, but they're not achieving anything. Whereas basically all traditional user interfaces have some, some external goal, I mean, external to the application or external to the website. Like you're gonna buy something and those shoes are gonna show up on your doorstep a few days later, or you're processing the payroll for the company, or whatever it is, but there's something that needs to be achieved. Uh, and for video game, there's nothing really to be achieved. If you think about it, a lot of these video games are kind of uh, fighting oriented in various ways. And if you think about it, you, you would want to have the most efficient term of fighting would be like one big button that says, kill all the enemies. You just press this button, boom, and they're all gone. That would be a very, very efficient user interface, right? And it would be a very boring game. And so in that sense, there are different requirements. But if you go back to the, like, the definition of, we have like the five usability quality attributes, which are you know easy to learn, efficient to use once you've learned it, memorable, you can return to it after absence, low error rate, and satisfaction. Right? Those all also apply to, to video games. The satisfaction becomes a much more important one, whereas for many, let's say, my very work-oriented tools, you still want happy employees, so you want you know, satisfied users, but maybe efficiency is most important if you're paying for these people's time. For video games, you know, it's, it's, it's really the, the satisfaction that's all important. But you still have to have learnability. I mean, it's not enjoyable if you go into a game and you have no idea how to make anything work, and it's just you know, not learnable. Uh, efficiency is maybe a little bit of a different criteria. So you don't want that ultimate efficiency of click one button, they all die. Uh, but still, you want to be able to like when you're moving around and stuff. You want those operations to be efficient anyway. You certainly want it to be memorable because you're playing the game one day. Maybe there's weeks go by and then you go and play it again. You don't want to have to learn it over again. And it's very annoying with errors. I mean, you sort of like you tr you you think that uh, I don't know, like you uh, switched from one weapon to the other, whatever it is, and what you didn't, or you you think you're in this part of the game, but you're in that part of the game. So that all those feedback mechanisms apply just as much. And certainly in terms of methodology, there's a lot of methodologies that are quite similar, actually. So in, in, the, in the games industry, they call it play testing rather than user testing or usability testing. But uh, you, you have people play the game, or you have people play an early version of the game, and you watch them play and you see you know how it happens. One of the, the differences there also is that often these games are quite long experiences. So it can take you know 40 hours of 80 hours to play through a game. And uh, so, so of course, for traditional user interfaces, it can also take a long time. I mean, how many hours have you spent on a word processor in your career, right? I mean, that's a lot. But in terms of the studying, we tend to study briefer sessions. And in gameplay, they actually do have to get gamers in and they sit them down in kind of a little la in a lab and you, they just play and play and play for, for days. Uh, so that's that's there are some differences there, right? But I think ultimately it's it's a user interface, it's a user experience. Um, the same general methodologies apply. Uh, the goals are somewhat different, uh, but there's a lot, a lot of similarities. A lot of things that actually we in in traditional user interface design uh, can learn from from games design in terms of well more enjoyable, but also in terms of like better feedback for let's say three dimensional environments or other of these more advanced user interfaces that often are somewhat clunky to use uh, for for work purposes, and so they are more easy to use for for game purposes because if they were not easy to use the game actually would be boring and you don't want to pay attention to the mechanics of operating the game. You want to be immersed in that game's world. And that's kind of one of the criteria we, we have also. I always say about website sites that you go to the website for a purpose to get the information, to buy something maybe, 
not to figure out how to operate the website. And that's exactly the same for a video game.